Good morning everyone, this is Tobias and today I'm going to walk you through the basic usage of desktops in Houdini. Uh, this is in response to some questions that I got for, from some other users about how to manage this. Um, so when you start up Houdini uh, as a new user, um, you're going to see the default desktop is what we call the build desktop. And as you can see, uh, for a lot of new users, this can be pretty overwhelming because there's a lot of information here. Um, and all these different tabs and uh, all these various tools and oh my lord uh, where do I start um, so what a lot of people want to do is simplify this um, so as they sort of work and learn how to use uh, Houdini um, now Houdini does come uh, built with a lot of pre-built desktops this little drop down here is what where the desktops are stored in a list uh, so for a lot of different uh, workflows if you will there are already uh, templates available so for instance th this text port is a common one for those that are working on uh, scripts and so forth this technical one is very common among you know uh, TDs or technical directors uh, that are working on scripts and environment stuff and all that um, whereas something like the modeling one is geared more towards a modeler and it has trimmed down uh, what you're seeing here as far as the tool set. Um, now, you can do all this yourself, um, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, but first let me just walk through some of the basic, basic, basic features of how everything's laid out here. So you have all these tabs that, you know, are loaded up by default, your tool sets and so forth. Now the interface, uh, everywhere you see like a little, uh, little taskbar or uh, a menu bar, you're gonna have these little black triangles next to it uh, so you can do things like close it to get out of your way and if if you're ever wondering why something disappeared and not quite sure chances are you probably just accidentally clicked you know too far off to the side and that's what happened you could always just click on that bar again and, to get it back and this is going to be true of anywhere you see something so if you're, if you're wondering what happened uh, that's usually what the case is all right so you have sidebars you have you know uh, top to bottom and so forth now in between um, panes you have uh, these little uh, handlebars right so you have a, a grab bar if you will there's these little dots here that you can see that allow you to to move the panes uh, side to side or up and down and you have either an, a left arrow or a right arrow or a top arrow and a down arrow uh, depending on your configuration and what this allows you to do is you know maximize or minimize various panes that you're on so say I'm looking at this and I just want to quickly you know maximize that I can do that and if I want to bring it back I just click it again uh, conversely that's also available here and this little uh, window button you could just hit that it literally does the same thing um, in this case for the scene view I have the ability to do you know multiple uh, breakups of the view viewport like this you know for the orthographic views but uh, that's not necessarily a desktop thing um, so anyway back to it um, so say here I want to make a simpler uh, desktop for I don't know just I, I want to do some really basic modeling and I I don't really want this configuration but maybe something side by side where I have parameters and then my network and then or vice versa because uh, sometimes the parameters can be you know rather lengthy and difficult to read in this configuration so here's a real quick way to do that um, you can go to the menu and go to new desktop and you're given basically a blank template and what we want to do here first is because we have just one one window pane here so we want to click on this little uh, viewport layout button and I'm, I'm gonna uh, whoops sorry the one on the top uh, so where it had the maximize pane you're gonna click on the little arrow next to it and uh, you can either split it top to bottom or left and right or any of these other features you have here so let's start by doing the left to right so now we have basically two pane windows here and uh, let's say for this one I just I want it to be my network view uh, so I don't want a scene view I'm going to change this by clicking the positive button here the add button and change that to network view but now I still have this scene view here and now I could just hit this little X to delete it and now I have you know my my usual network view and now I can go in and you know do whatever 
silly stuff I want to do. Um, but I don't have any parameters here. Uh, so there's two options in this configuration. Um, I could either hit P to bring up this little tiny window here. Uh, this is okay for something simple like this, but if I were to use something more complicated, I would have to continually be resizing this and so forth, which may be fine for you. Or you may prefer to split this again left and right and except this time you want to see parameters of whatever you're clicked on right so now I have this parameters window and I can get rid of this little button there and let's just say that that's you know that's that's what I like that's how I want it um, for when I'm working on things and let's say I want to make sure that I always have this tool set here and up at the top I have no no shelves, but let's just say I want to add a shelf. I just right click on this, this gray area, this thin line here, and I can add any of the preset ones I want, or I can make a new one and search for the little icons that are relevant to what I'm doing. Uh, for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna choose, uh, just say the simple modeling tools. And what that'll do is load up all the tabs that are relevant to the modeling tools uh, for me. Um, so that way I have them. Um, and there you go. So let's say I just like this as my simple little, you know, started desktop when I load up Houdini. I could just go to the drop down again and I want to save the current desktop as, because I want to do save as so that I can rename it from the, the default that it just loaded, which was just desk. Um, so let's just say this is, you know, my name and simple desktop. Oops, if I could spell. And uh, hit save, and I'll get a little confirmation that it saved the file into my home directory of wherever this installation is, right? And what that means is if I go to uh, my documents folder on my computer, um, and then go to the Houdini, whatever version your in install is, and then go to the desktop folder, it created uh, this little dot desk file that has all of the settings for what I just did. Um, now I can copy this file and uh, basically copy it to another machine if I have uh, a second install of Houdini on a laptop for instance uh, or wherever um, and it'll load it'll make these settings available to me in this drop-down menu okay um, if you wanted to make this setup your uh, setup that loads up every time you start Houdini you'd have to go to preferences um, desktops and toolbars and oops I'm sorry I think it's general user interface yes the very first option general user interface start in desktop uh, you can see by default it's build um, but once I've created a desktop you can change it to whatever so if I were to select this to buy a simple desktop then I, the next time I started Houdini it would load uh, that this desktop and this is what I would be faced with every time I started Houdini um, okay I hope that answered some of the questions that you had um, and as you can see it's really not not that intimidating um, so uh, this might help make things a little bit simpler and a little bit more pleasing to the eye when you're when you're trying to figure out and learn Houdini or if you're just you know an experienced user trying to go through some uh, specific workflows and you don't want a lot of clutter on the screen uh, there you have it I uh, hope that was helpful and I'll see you next time